In this video, I'll be providing a project status update on this 1988 Porsche 944, and a breakdown of the maintenance and repairs performed during my fifth year of ownership, along with their associated costs. Looking back at year four, the most significant success story was having completed the entire front end rebuild on the car, which included the addition of a new support bracket, a radiator, AC condenser, air guides, lower front spoiler, fog lights, and some paintwork, among other things. Notable additions throughout the year also included the installation of Lindsay Racing's NA Maftune kit, where a horsepower gain of about 5% was observed under dyno testing, replacement of the balance shaft housing seals to correct some oil leaks, and a steering system update that deleted the power steering system in favor of a custom manual steering setup derived from a Mark I Volkswagen Rabbit. Outside the car, a new OEM windshield was installed to address some delamination along the lower edge, while the inside received a new rear view mirror and glove box door hangers. With all the work done in year four, the car was really starting to come together as a reliable driver, which allowed for a shift in focus to a few cosmetic and comfort related items in year five. At the beginning of the year, I found that the windshield washer system had become inoperable, so I first confirmed that the washer fluid pump was functional, and then pulled it from the reservoir to check for clogs in the fluid lines. While the pump seemed to be working pretty well, the T-shaped and the L-shaped check valves under the hood seemed to be clogged with debris, so I replaced both the valves for $16. To complement the previously replaced coolant expansion tank and brake fluid reservoir in the engine bay, I went ahead and replaced the washer fluid reservoir for $113, and added in some new pinch clamps to the fluid lines for $13. Total cost for this repair came to $143.45. As the winter months began fading into spring, I've been looking forward to putting some worry-free miles on the car, but I soon discovered an oil leak at the rear crankshaft seal. The rear main seal was one of the last remaining oil seals I'd yet to replace on the engine, so I knew it was only a matter of time before it failed as well. Fortunately, I'd been sitting on a Saks clutch kit for just this occasion, so the car went back up on jack stands for the repairs. The $20 crankshaft seal sits behind about 10 to 12 hours of labor, as replacement requires that the transaxle be removed from the car, the torque tube disconnected and pulled back, and the bell housing and clutch assembly removed from the engine. Once you're there, the seal is relatively easy to pry out and replace after cleaning up the sealing surfaces. I went with an L-ring seal during installation, but both L-ring and Victor Rhines make good quality seals for this application. In preparation for the rebuild, I had the clutch housing, the starter ring gear, and the flywheel glass bead blasted to remove some surface oxidation, and I coated the exterior of the clutch housing with a high temperature satin clear to maintain its restored condition. The flywheel was also resurfaced for $50, where two thousandths were removed from the friction surface and the step down reset to its prior measurement. I added some customizations to the timing marks on the flywheel and clutch housing using some red enamel paint to highlight the OT line and the alignment tab, which should make future timing belt work a little easier to complete. When replacing the clutch assembly on a 944, there are a number of other items recommended for replacement during that time such as the flywheel bolts and the guide tube for the release bearing. So in addition to the clutch kit I purchased for $527, I decided to go all in and ended up replacing the guide tube for $6, the starter ring bolts for $15, the flywheel bolts for $22, the clutch fork needle bearings for $20, and I added in a new clutch fork pin for $47 because the old one had developed some grooves from the prior bearings. After removing the old pilot bearing with a slide hammer, I installed the new one that came with the clutch kit and began to install the reconditioned flywheel, followed by the clutch disc, the pressure plate, and the starter ring gear. After reinstalling the clutch housing, I proactively replaced the speed and reference sensors for $186, since the connectors on the old ones were showing some signs of wear. Cost for the rear main seal and clutch replacement came to $1,030.76. Since the torque tube was already disconnected for the clutch replacement, I thought it'd be a good time to inspect the condition of the drive shaft and the torque tube bearings while I was there. When spinning the drive shaft in place, the bearings were exhibiting some clunking noises and there was a bit of a wobble in the shaft at the flywheel end, so I decided to remove and rebuild the torque tube with all new bearings, which requires that the rear suspension be unbolted and lowered from the car by about 8 inches to fully extract the torque tube. In the spirit of building it better, I opted to replace all four OEM torque tube bearings with a set of super bearings from Black Sea R&D for $870. The super bearings feature larger surface areas on the rubber exteriors as well as the inserts, which allows them to isolate driveline vibrations and better support the drive shaft during operation. Once the torque tube was disassembled, I stripped and repainted the tube in satin black, cleaned and painted the drive shaft, and confirmed there was no damage to the shaft splines and that the pilot nub was within specification. Tools and supplies for the rebuild process came to $94, bringing the torque tube rebuild total to $964.16. While I was reinstalling the transaxle on the car, I decided to replace the worn transmission mount with Lindsay Racing's Ultra Mount for $316. This mount is similar to a solid transmission mount, but it applies four rubber vibration isolators between the mount and the transmission support hanger. Installation requires the transaxle support carrier to be removed from the car and its mounting holes drilled out to accommodate some larger 10mm bolts. 
But outside of that, the mount is a direct fit replacement on later 944s. During the reassembly, I also replaced the foam shifter insulation for $93. This sound absorbing insulation tends to break down over time and crumble into dust. And as you can see, this old foam was starting to look pretty rough. The insulation can be replaced from within the car by squeezing and pushing the foam into position where it sits between the torque tube and the shift lever. While I was there, I discovered that the shift lever insulating boot had also cracked, so I replaced it with a new rubber boot for $45, which should help prevent exhaust fumes from entering the cabin. While reinstalling the exhaust system, I replaced one of the exhaust hangers for $31, a rubber mount for $20, and the exhaust ceiling ring for $26. By this time, summer was approaching, so I took the opportunity to repair the car's air conditioning and convert the system to R134A refrigerant. Since the system had been compromised and inoperable for the length of my ownership, I thought it best to go ahead and replace the AC compressor with a rebuilt Nippon Denso unit, as well as a new receiver dryer and all the O-rings throughout the engine compartment, parts for which came to $645. I picked up a Santec retrofit kit that included the R134A valve adapters and replacement valve cores for $20. The HVAC control panel needed a little help as well, where the AC switch had previously broken, so I performed a refurbishment on the panel using some parts from a pre-owned panel I bought for $91. After adding 27 ounces of Freon and recharging the system for $38, total cost for this repair came to $794.32. I was really starting to appreciate the newly restored air conditioning throughout the summer months, which can get pretty hot and humid here in North Carolina and I was able to put about 400 miles on the car before discovering yet another oil leak, this time at the lid seal on the air oil separator. I had previously replaced the upper and lower O-rings that connect the AOS to the engine block, but the lid seal wasn't an issue at the time. This lid seal at the upper ventilation cap isn't available as an OEM part, with Porsche simply offering the entire AOS unit for around $600, but fortunately there are some aftermarket seal options that match the OEM specifications of 3 inches in diameter and 3 millimeters in width. These are only sold in large quantities, however, where I picked up 50 pieces for the price of $25. I also went ahead and replaced the engine block O-rings again for $16, the intake manifold gaskets for $8, and the oil fill cap for $25, which includes a new O-ring. Along with the newly refreshed oil fill cap, I also wanted to replace the oil dipstick with its matching yellow handle so that both parts would be in similar condition. But after ordering a replacement dipstick, I found that Porsche had since changed the composition of the plastic and it no longer matched, now being produced in a lighter cream color. I even ordered a second dipstick just to be sure that the first one wasn't defective, and sure enough, the part has simply changed in design. Since the coloring was way off, I decided to retain the car's original deep yellow dipstick, and I just cleaned it up a bit. Cost for this maintenance totaled $79.07. As the summer moved on, I was able to put another couple hundred miles on the car without any fluid leaks, which was great. Around this time, however, I began to notice what seemed to be a weak spark or partial ignition issue with the car, where it was breaking up just a little bit under heavy acceleration, and I was seeing the presence of some black soot collecting at the back of the car, essentially unburned fuel, so I went ahead and replaced the ignition cables with a new set of Baru leads for $152. One of the leads had tested slightly out of specification, so I was hoping the new cables would improve the ignition response, but it seemed to have little effect. At this point, having previously replaced the entire fuel delivery system, along with the distributor cap and rotor, spark plugs, ignition coil, and all relevant sensors like the O2 sensor, the DME temperature sensor, and the speed and reference sensors, the DME computer was looking like the last remaining suspect. A common failure point on the aging factory DME computers is that the ignition overcurrent protection gradually loses its calibration, which causes the ignition driver to heat up and soften the solder joints, which fatigue under vibration and eventually crack. While this is happening, the ignition spark gradually weakens until the ignition circuit fails altogether. So to remedy this, I purchased the 944 Sport DME by Focus 9 Technology for $504. These units are produced using updated electronics and modern design practices, while swapping over the four main microchips from an original DME, which preserves its core functionality. As you can probably tell, there's some serious reverse engineering and quality manufacturing put in these products. If you look at the component size differences between the OEM boards and the new Sport DME boards, all the resistors and microchips that originally took up two entire boards connected at the center by ribbon cables on the factory Bosch DME have now been condensed to one single circuit board on the Sport DME. After installing the new Sport DME, I immediately noticed an improvement in acceleration response. The engine was smoother and quicker to rev, and it was no longer breaking up under load. Another issue I was working to address throughout the year involved the upper radiator air guide that refused to stay clipped in place to the leading edge of the radiator. This plastic air duct is secured by four metal clips along the bottom edge and five metal S-shaped spring clips along the top edge. And every time I would drive the car after replacing the clips, I returned only to find them popped off and missing. After going through three rounds of missing clips at $8 a piece, I decided to remove the nose panel for closer inspection. It appeared the lower clips were giving way as air was forced into the front of the car, which was pushing the air duct up and back, causing the spring clips to release, so I decided to replace everything with all new parts. 
This was the one plastic air guide out of the three that I elected not to replace during the front end rebuild, since it largely sits out of sight, but anyway, installed a brand new air guide for $20, four new lower retaining clips for $9, and another round of five upper spring clips for $39. After taking extra care to ensure the new parts were firmly affixed to the car, I was happy to find that it resolved the issue. Total cost for this repair came to $95.53, not including the $100 worth of lost spring clips that are now scattered across the roadways in North Carolina. A few other odds and ends that were cared for during year five include replacement of the oxidized lower rear shock mounting bolts and washers for $37, the right interior light door jam switch and rubber seal for $24, and the lower balance shaft inspection hole plug on the belt cover for $2. Towards the end of the year, I also performed another oil and filter change with Valvoline's VR1 20W50 oil and a Mala OC142 filter for $64, and I replaced the spark plugs yet again for $7. This completed mechanical repair and maintenance items for year five, which came to $4,623.32. In addition to these mechanical items, I completed some work on the interior and exterior of the car as well. As for the exterior, I performed a full restoration on the staggered set of Design 90 wheels, which was inspired by the need to replace the BF Goodrich G-Force Comp 2s that had aged out from a safety perspective. The D90s had certainly seen better days, where they now featured a number of scratches and minor curb rash around the outer edges of the wheels, in addition to some heavily baked on deposits of brake dust that collected over the decades. After removing the old tires, I spent some time leveling out the curb rash on the outer edges of the wheels using an orbital sander and some 120 grit sandpaper. With the major imperfections removed, the wheels were glass bead blasted and two-stage powder coated in Porsche silver and gloss clear coat for $740. With the wheels reconditioned, I added a new set of Continental Extreme Contact DWS 06 Plus all-season tires for $680, as they paired well with my goal of making the car a more useful year-round driver. To complete the wheel restoration, I installed a new set of center caps with the colored Porsche Crest for $235 and all new aluminum wheel nuts for $90. Exterior restoration costs for year five totaled $1,874.39. For the interior of the car, I replaced the four spoke steering wheel with a nicer conditioned pre owned one that was pulled from a 1986 944 Turbo. The original steering wheel was showing some signs of age with a few cracks in the leather wrap and the stitching across the top edge completely deteriorated from sun exposure. I also reconditioned the inside of the metal ashtray on the center console that had developed some surface oxidation. With the ashtray assembly removed, the metal cup can be pulled from the side of the plastic trim piece, which provides easy access for sanding and coating. And finally, I took some steps to stop the spread of a small crack in the outer door panel at the base of the driver's side window seal. This is a common issue that can develop on the 944 due to a failed weld at the rear window guide inside the door. With the interior door card removed, you can see how up and down movement of the power window assembly applies outward pressure on the guide rail, and when the weld eventually fails from overuse and vibration, that pressure is then passed onto the outer sheet metal, causing it to crack. So I clamped the guide rail back in place, popped on a quick weld, and covered it up with some touch-up paint. Interior restoration costs for year five came to a total of $150. Looking back on the year, it was really nice to add a clutch replacement and a torque tube rebuild to the list of completed tasks on the car. And with a now near complete engine rebuild, top and bottom, all the oil seal replacements, the major drivetrain maintenance, and all the other electrical and fuel system updates performed over the past five years, the 944 will hopefully provide many miles of trouble-free operation going forward. At this point, this restoration is coming to a close, and I don't have any remaining goals for the car other than to find more time to drive it and enjoy it, something that's often proved a little difficult as I only added a total of 946 miles throughout the year. But anyway, here's a breakdown of cost for the year. The initial vehicle cost and first four years of expenses came to $27,839.39. Mechanical repairs for year five came to $4,623. The exterior and interior expenses were $1,874 and $150 respectively, making the grand total investment to date $34,487.10. And that concludes the review of the project log for year five on this 1988 Porsche 944.